Hi, welcome everyone to uh, the next live interview. Uh, today we have Todd Levy from Bloom Worlds. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself, Todd? How are you guys doing? Thanks, Peter, for having us, or me. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, my name is Todd Levy. I'm co-founder of Bloom Worlds. And what we're doing is we're developing Android's family-friendly app store to help Android parents discover safe, secure, and appropriate apps by utilizing our hands-on approach to creation. Um, so basically, we're not going to have hundreds of thousands of apps like other app stores. We're literally going to have hundreds of the highest quality, most innovative apps for the entire family. So, okay, so Bloom Worlds is that's kind of that's kind of the quick pitch, I guess. All right, so Bloom Worlds is uh, an Android app store for family-friendly apps. Then. In yes, a <laughs> that's just a high level, yeah. Okay, so what brought about uh, Bloom Worlds? Why why another Android app store? Sure. Um, my co-founder, Daryl, is and was an iPhone fanboy. And when I got my Android phone, we were kind of comparing and contrasting Apple's App Store to the Android market. And we knew there was definitely opportunities to create a compelling offer for Android users. Um, why another store? I mean, besides being, you know, monetarily, you know, billion, multi-billion dollar opportunity, there's, we think there's a lot of room for innovation in the App Store space. Um, Bloom Worlds will add value to the entire ecosystem um, once users and developers see our vision to, to filter, structure, personalize content. They'll realize why we built another app store. So, okay. So, do you impose any restrictions on the apps that you're taking to your app your app store? And if so, what are they? Yes, yeah, so all the yeah. So all the apps will be vetted. We kind of have a three things that we're looking for. Uh, one is content. Apps must be within our niche, which is family friendly. Um, we're looking for educational stuff, games, things the whole family can enjoy. The second thing would be security tests. All the apps must pass uh, scans for antivirus, malware, spyware, um, making sure none of the bad people put anything bad on it, mm -hmm. uh, on these files. And the third is the human element. We're going to have a parental advisory council that's going to review all the apps and test them, kind of give them a seal of approval before they're even available on the store. Mm -hmm. So that, that's those are the restrictions. So content, security, and the human element to make sure we have the best high-quality apps on there. Now, my wife has an Android phone, and I've always just gone to the app store that's like right on the phone, the little icon. Is, are you yeah. gonna, is there going to be some other... Uh, like, how do they get your app store on their phone? Is there an easy way? Yeah, to so, so we're gonna have a web a web client. So you'll be able to go to our website and shop for apps. And you'll be able to install, and then it will be over at installation to your phone. It will require our our app to be on your phone to start with, mm -hmm. but that's just a quick download. Mm -hmm. um, very much how Amazon's doing their app store, but we are working with. Um, in the early discussions with some OEMs and uh, some some tier one and two carriers about having our app store pre-installed mm -hmm. uh, devices, but like I said, it's very early. We're still working on it. So, okay. So, what can Bloom Worlds offer that the other Android app stores cannot? Well, I mentioned um, family-friendly apps, but we also have some developer-friendly solutions. Um, um, we give the developers options. Um, Apple kind of created that 70-30 revenue split, and everyone's kind of jumped on board and kind of used that as kind of the industry standard. Um, we have other plans besides that to help developers monetize, depending on if you have a smaller marketing budget, uh, but you want to be featured and promoted, we have a plan for that. If you want to be exclusive to Bloom Worlds, we can work out some terms for for there, and also um, we have different plans for uh, developers whose games or apps are required in-app purchases. Okay. So, regardless of what what kind of your focus is and how you try to developers are trying to monetize their games, well, we should have a solution that kind of fits there, not just that kind of seventy thirty that's become standard. So, okay. also in addition. Uh, like I said, we, we, the quality of the apps over quantity of apps. I think that's a really thing that how we're going to differentiate. A lot of these app stores are trying to be the biggest app store and have hundreds of thousands of apps. We're not. We're going to have literally hundreds of them, and they're all going to be really cool and really high quality. And um, 
it'd be a really nice user experience. You don't have to go through pages and pages of apps to look. We're, we're going to have uh, apps for the entire family. We're going to organize it a lot differently than you would see in other app stores. So, Okay, so when will it be ready? Well, right now, our developer portal is open, which means developers can create accounts, they can upload their assets, and we're right now we're basically stocking the shelves of our app store, and uh, we'll be opening soon um, the consumer side so people can actually buy apps. We don't have a target uh, date to announce yet, but it, it, it's, it's coming soon. Okay. Uh, for someone like me that's coming from the iPhone market, uh, one of the biggest concerns that I've always had was the... Uh, fragmentation of the diff all the different devices available for Android. Uh, okay. Do you um, have you ever noticed any sort of indication from Google maybe that they're going to standardize, uh, uh, basically uh, making a level platform or anything like that, or do you think it's yeah. the wide open market is maybe a better option? Yeah. Well, you know, I haven't heard or seen anything to indicate Google standardize the platform. I think that kind of would go be contrary to their like so-called openness. Um, but I think fragmentation is kind of the nature of the beast with open platform. I mean, you're given they're giving away this OS to every device manufacturer and OEM to kind of do what they say. So the specs are different, screen sizes, resolutions. I can see how it's a nightmare, you know, sometimes for developers, you know. But I also think, you know, iOS, to be fair, has fragmentation issues also. I mean, if you want to develop for the iPad, it's totally different than iPhone. And then the iPhone has different versions as well. I mean, it's 3G, 3GS, the 4G. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of uh, fragmentation is kind of the name of the game for, for mobile, you know. Um, if, if game developers are like, if you know, something they really can't handle or don't want to deal with, I mean, maybe mobile won't be the best kind of avenue for them to develop for. I know, and you correct me if I'm wrong, Peter, but uh, you probably know me a lot, lot better. But like uh, the PC or console world for those kind of games mm -hmm. is a lot more standardized, you know. So, yeah. I mean, I, I guess to some developers, mobile is not the answer, you know. So, all right. So, how do the do you have any indicate or any information how the sales compare between the Android marketplace and maybe the a Apple App Store? Sure, um, I've seen different kind of reports, and I don't have numbers in front of me right now. But what I can tell is, um, over the last few quarters, I believe Apple users are more likely to pay and download for apps and games than Android users. Yeah. But I think that's because of a couple things. One, the maturity of the platform. Apple's been there a little bit longer, and they have have kind of a higher quality as far as games. Android's been a little subpar to them because I think Apple's done a really good job of courting developers and, and vetting the whole ecosystem. So it's just the quality naturally is a little bit better. But I think as more developers bring their titles over to Android and they kind of port that their their um, games, uh, we'll see the market change. And I know Android users are willing to pay for premium content. So, I guess another option would also be instead of um, having a, a price point for your game, is, would be uh, sort of in-game advertising. Uh, is that okay on your store as well? Or yeah, we don't restrict advertising. Okay. We uh, the only thing we're going to do is if you do have advertising, we just ask whatever advertising, whatever mobile advertising company you're working with. Mm -hmm. We just like to have their terms of service available, and we're going to actually keep the we're going to keep those on the app detail page. So if parents are looking for something, um, you know they can look at the terms of service for that particular advertising. Because I know once a developer kind of hands it over to the ad company, they don't really have too much control over what ads get placed. Yeah. So we would hate to have a situation arise, and I know it could, and it probably is going to happen, but like you download a game for your seven-year-old son, and all of a sudden you see you know a, a, a naked girl ad on there in, in his game. Like so, we just. You know, to be proactive that way, we just want to have to kind of include the terms of service that the advertiser will have. So, in case there is any inappropriate content or nudity or something like that, at least we we let let, let the parents know ahead of time that hey, this ad company might have this. Okay. You know, just at your discretion, you know. But no, we're not going to bar people from having advertising. So, okay, uh, I 
I guess it's one way to get around the whole, you know, more people more likely to pay for an app. Um, and one thing I also noticed on the, the, the Google App Store was the fact that you have 24 hours to basically return your game without paying for it. Yeah, I've they actually seen... changed that recently. Oh, they um, have? Okay. A couple months ago, actually. Now it's um, 15 minutes, I believe. And oh. correct me if I'm wrong, if anyone in the audience knows. But uh, yeah, they changed that to 15 minutes because a lot of people were downloading games and then returning them. Yeah. 20. So this is kind of a way to help the developers. Uh, we've kind of come up with a policy. We have, we're real big sticklers on uh, like the first hour experience. Mm -hmm. I feel that whether it's an app or a game or even like a movie or a TV show, anything website, you know, like you basically have like a few seconds to impress everybody. But like after an hour, you can tell whether it's something you're going to play or not, not and do everything. So we're going to have like an hour return policy. And, you know, if, if someone, re you know, it's not going to be hard stance or anything. Like if someone really wants to return something, we'll work with them and give them credit or something like that. It's not really a big big thing. We don't, you know, I'm sure we can, if there's some guy yeah, just downloading things to play and return them constantly, like we'll catch them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like but, you know, we'll, we'll work with people they don't want something, you know, so. Yeah, that was another thing I noticed when I was first looking at the Android marketplace was the return yeah. policy. I mean, we're talking about, I mean, a lot of things we're talking about is 99 cent apps. You know, it's like yeah. you go into the grocery store and you buy a, a pack of gum and you, you take the first piece and you buy it and you don't like the flavor. You're going to go back and get your money. You know, like, so I think a lot of it like that too. So. Uh, I think actually a lot of people probably, I could see a lot of younger people, I hate to kind of put them in a demographic like that, but I could see a lot of people. Uh, going out and getting a game for ninety nine cents, playing it for you know twenty three hours, returning it, and then buying it again. But even still, like an hour, that that's fine. Like it was the whole yeah. Well, I think that first hour experience is just really important, and I, don't, I think it's on the developer if they can't get you know the user hooked or wanting to play it or tell people about it. Like yeah, you know maybe they can come up with some more games. I don't know. <laughs> okay, well let's go over to our chat room here. See if we have any questions. Uh, I see one from uh, Philo Hick. Uh, when did you guys think of the idea for Bloom Worlds? Uh, we started um, um, about a year ago. We started um, in our start our incubator program, accelerator program called the Founder Institute, and we went over with a totally different idea. We actually wanted to build some augmented reality games and um, for for phones, and it just the technology wasn't there yet. And um, we really saw this opportunity with the App Store. So right about, about last year, right around early June, we kind of switched and like this is where we're going to start doing it. And we started uh, really formulating the idea over June and July, and we started actually building it out in August. So it's been about six, seven months. So and we're hopefully to launch here pretty soon. So okay, uh, yeah, about ha half a year. So that's not too bad then. Uh, yeah. We have another question here from Philo. Um, do you know of any free low-budget Android maker thingies uh, other than Unity? Uh, yeah, there was actually someone emailed me one the other day. If you don't, I can look at it. Can you give me a sec? It's on my phone, actually. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't called App Maker, but it was. Oh man, let me look for it. Hold on. I, I can there's... email you, Peter. Can be better? What's that? Let me go through my emails. And I'll forward it to you. And you can forward it on to um, your people. Okay. Um, I know there's a. But yeah, it was like, it was kind of like a do it do it yourself kind of app that can take. I think you already need to have some web content though, but it, it can able to wrap it up into a into a mobile app. Is that is that what they're talking about? Uh, they're. I think they're just talking along the lines of some applications, something similar to Unity, that makes the workflow you know really easy to make your mobile app. Uh, yeah. If if they are talking about game engines, there's. There's quite a few game engines now. I think that's supported. I think Corona supports it. I'm not sure if Game Salad does or not. They do iPhone. Uh, yeah, I I don't know. Yeah, well, if Game Salad does, it's free. So it does do iPhone games, and uh, I'm pretty sure it does Android. I haven't really looked at it that much. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of them out there. You can even just go straight into Java and write your own, uh, well, not your own engine, but your own application right in there. Yeah. So where do you see the Android App Store, or at least the Android platform, say about a year from now? Uh, do you see it catching up maybe to, I hate to constantly compare it to the Apple Store, but the Apple Store just seems to 
Well, I've I've just read, I, and if you can go to our blog, I kind of took some um, data off the Nielsen's latest report, and um, right now, like, there's two different things. Market share wise, Android is has more devices out there. I right. think it was 37 percent to Apple's 27 percent, and then I think Rim was in there, BlackBerry, yeah. and then every you know WebOS and Windows was kind of. You know, about ten percent. They're all kind of fighting for, um, and then another another stat was actually the uh, a user's likelihood for their next device, what they want to buy, and fifty oh fifty percent exactly was Android devices. Yeah, I, so, I wouldn't look at that post on your on your blog. Uh, well, we're talking about your blog. Why don't you give the address to your to your blog, or at least to your website? Yeah, the well, website is bloomworlds.com. Okay. B l o m w o r l d s dot com. So if you're a developer out there on Android and you want to submit, um, our portal is open. And if you're a user and you want to sign up for a beta, it's it's going to be opening up pretty soon. So. Okay. Uh, is there anything you okay, want to? Thank you for the opportunity. I, you know, and uh, I appreciate it. Um, we're going to be launching soon. I think we're going to add some value to the Android ecosystem and really give families a place where they can shop for apps together and really have a great user experience and help the developers out with some, some really friendly, friendly, innovative terms. So I think we're going to be able to really deliver on this. So I appreciate your help and getting the word out and thank you. Uh, no problem. Uh, did you want to give that uh, website address out again one more time before we leave? Sure. It's uh, bloomworlds.com. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for showing up and telling me about your, uh, product and uh, hopefully you, you get some people checking you out. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Bye.